Really, thank you for that introduction on behalf of Mass University, and it is our great pleasure to be here tonight and speaking with you and really appreciate the time that it took to come in in the middle of the afternoon, your time. Uh, hopefully we'll have some insights to share with you, specifically what we're all be speaking about our connections to practice, starting your careers, what it takes to, to really get a good solid start on finding your ideal career. I'm not gonna say job, it's a career because it's a pursuit of passion. We have a lot of experience uh, with that, with uh, joining on the journey of our students at Mass University. In fact, what you'll find, I believe Mass University, one of our key attributes is, is really uh, being very thankful and respectful that we are joining you on your education journey as you start off coming through a university and, and going on into fantastic careers. So as has already been said, my background, I do come from business and I think that's important to point that out again here now. I've had quite a number of years at business running my own businesses before joining Massey University about 17 years ago. And, and that's, that's a key attribute, uh, not just for myself having one foot in, in the real world uh, but also in, in academics and in research, but a large number of my colleagues here at Massey University similarly are grounded in our practical application of knowledge. So our students that come through Massey, we're not just going to teach you out of textbooks. In fact, what we're going to do is to help you apply the learnings from textbooks so you can go out and you can start contributing uh, to your employer or starting your own business from, from day one. So that's what this is about. Just to give you a bit of a roadmap of where I intend to take you over the next 30 minutes. First of all, I am gonna give you just a little bit of an introduction and I'll keep it brief on, on Mass University, uh, partially because I'm very, very proud of the institution I represent. But then I'm gonna speak primarily today about some of the tips, I've been an employer a lot of my life. I work a lot currently with employers and there's some common themes that come out from employers on what they're looking for from graduates like yourselves, what they're wanting from a graduate like yourself in terms of the contribution you can make to, to an organization, some of the skills. And you might be, you might be a little bit surprised uh, what I'm gonna tell you a bit later. I'll keep that a bit secret for now but I think you're gonna be somewhat surprised or maybe not, but, but um, there certainly is a changing market, employment market on what is really key uh, to, to being able to get that first job and starting your careers. Okay, so going through this, I just always like to start with this slide here and believe it or not, I can remember back to when I was in your position, just getting ready to start out on my journey and sometimes it feels like, like you're on the edge of a cliff, you know, and it's you're looking down from a, a dizzying height and you look down below you and it's, it seems fairly scary. But I'd like to say to you that it honestly isn't that scary. And a couple of years from now, you'll look back and you'll think of, you know, the, the decision you're making now is one of the most important, fundamental and exciting careers that you will, that you will have made at that point at least. So, so before we go into anything else, uh, just let me introduce Massey University. Massey, this is beautiful New Zealand. I'm sure everyone's pretty familiar with New Zealand. You've seen pictures. Massey University is the truly national university in New Zealand. We have three campuses. All three campuses are located on what's called the North Island. You'll see we have campuses in Auckland, Palmerston North and Wellington. I'm based in Auckland myself. The whole country is entirely beautiful. You have to honestly come here to just truly appreciate the beauty of it. Massey campuses across these three destinations. You see Massey Business School here. Matter of fact, where I'm sitting right now as we speak is right underneath that arch. So we have three beautiful campuses. They all have their own character. Uh, they do, they are different, but they are similar at the same time. Why similar? Because we are focused as an institution we are focused as a university. We are focused on our students getting the best education that will send them off into fantastic careers. That's what we're all about. And that's why I'm speaking to you tonight about careers, because we know that most of our students who come through are looking to get to have a start on a good career. And that's what we're here to help you do. 
And in, in part, we help you do that based on the respect that Mass University has globally in the ranking. Uh, you'll see that we're ranked 272nd across the globe in our 2021 rankings. And we are ranked, for example, number one in New Zealand across all New Zealand instant universities by the Shanghai ranking. Our world university rankings, mostly in the top 150 or thereabout. My particular area of finance is really one of the strong attributes, one of the strong programs at Massey amongst many, but finance is certainly one of the highly ranked programs as is communication. So that, that's really all I have to say about Massey. And, and certainly I'd be happy to, to um, answer any questions when we come to that point. But we are a world leading university. We are very internationally focused and we are very, very double very student centric. And what student centric means, you probably hear that maybe from other universities, but I can tell you hand on heart that Massey University cares about our students and we care about student success. So that's, that's a fact. And we care about connecting our students to business. And that's important. And that's what we're going to talk about careers because for what we call ivory tower universities who are very isolated from the business community, they don't have a strong sense of what employers are looking for. We have a strong a connection to business, connection to practice right across New Zealand, right across the globe in many different areas, because as I've already said, but it bears repeating, because we know that's important for for what we stand for as a university, that connection to business, the connection to practice, where we teach you the skills uh, that we'll talk to next and uh, in, in helping you get a, get a start in your careers. The trading room, my area of finance again, uh, being one of those examples where we were the first university in New Zealand to have a live trading room. Those of you who are interested in finance, that's quite critical because what you're looking at here are Bloomberg term terminals which are very expensive, but they're very critical to the industry. And if you start a career at a, at a trading house, investment house, banking, any most aspects of finance, you will be have to familiarize yourself with Bloomberg terminals. And that's what we're teaching you here at the university. Okay, so that's, that's my sort of spiel, um, but that just set the stage for what you're here to, I guess, uh, learn mostly about. And that's, that's about business careers. And what is that going to take for you, you know, at this juncture, you're now at a crossroad. What is that going to take for you to really to make that, that choice, the decision, where are you going to go? What degree might you pursue? Uh, what's your calling? What's it going to take to, to get you from where you're sitting today, tonight, uh, to where you want to be 5, 10, 20 years down the road? And it's a challenging time right now uh, to to, to really be joining the workforce and to be undertaking a university degree because, because things are changing so fast. You know, so the, the skill-based technologies that, you know, for example, even myself as a finance practitioner, you know, you have something called FinTech, some of you maybe have heard about, which is, you know, the financial adaptation of, uh, you know, trading platforms and so forth that, that kind of take the human out of the equation. So there's all kinds of changes. And, and how are you? How are you going to prepare yourself for the future when the future is somewhat uncertain? And here's a, here's a bit of a fact for you. And this is according to the United Nations survey, it's about 2018, so a couple of years old now, but your generation, I can't see you, but assuming that you're say 20 years old, you know, over the course of your working career, which I hate to tell you, it's not going to be till you're 65 years old, it's probably going to be till you're 70. So you're going to be working approximately 50 years. Over that 50 years, you will have eight different careers. You will work in eight different industries based on the United Nations polling. Of those eight different careers that you will have, five of them don't even exist yet. All you have to do is think back to smartphones, think back to social media, think back to digital platforms and tourism, Airbnb, et cetera. Those didn't exist. You know, 10 years ago, there was no Facebook. That's hard to imagine. Uh, not much longer thereabouts, there was no smartphones. This has all happened and this is a rate of change uh, that, that the world is going through. 
But now is a great time to sharpen up on the skills that are actually going to be in demand. Because while technology can be seen as a threat, it can also be seen as your best friend. If you have the skills that complement uh, this, this you know, digital transformation that we're seeing the technolo technological changes. Okay, but you can't be thinking like my, say for example, my father would have been thinking that he would go to university and learn one skill and that would get him entirely through his career. And the question is on your career is what, what paths are safe? You know, so you look, it's, you know, there's editors, you know, this is uh, the probability of these particular jobs uh, being replaced over the next 20 years or so. This is a little bit dated at this point, but it still holds. So you see certain careers are more at risk than others. You know, so if you look at even pilots, I mean, pilots, can you imagine a, a computer's flying planes? Personally, I don't think I'd want to get on one, uh, but commercial pilots, technical writers, accountants, and all you have to do is look at all the accounting software to see that the typical role of an accountant has changed. And the typical role of an accountant would have been somebody who, you know, did debits and credits and added up the numbers and, and, and gave a report uh, after they ran through an Excel spreadsheet. But in actual fact, that's not, you know, the accountant and auditors, that sector profession is under threat, but there are just as many careers in accountancy and audit as there ever has been, but it looks different. Instead of being somebody who sits as an accountant in a back room uh, and never interacts with your client, now, in fact, accounting careers require that you are forward facing, that you have personal, interpersonal skills, that you can communicate knowledge, okay? So that's something to consider because 21st century skills look different they're entirely different for what would have been expected by employers 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 50 years ago, you know, where you would go to university, for example, and you would learn a specific skill that never changes probably over most of the course of your working career. But now in the 21st century, there are other skills and that's something I'll have to go back and plug Massey for a second. Because we look, we are continually, in fact, looking at all of our programs and revising them. And we did a major change of all of our programs in the business school, probably coming on now about eight years ago, where we identified the skills that were required for us to provide you with marketable um, skills that were sought by employers. And yes, you still need to learn basic finance. Yes, you still need to learn basic accounting. Yes, you still need to leave some, learn some of those core skills. But there are these other 21st century skills. And here's what they are. And this is what now we at Massey University have embedded in all of our programs. And they're the seven C's, the survivor skills. So you can learn about finance, but you need to have cognitive skills, thinking, Things change very quickly. So you need to be a thinker. You need to have cognition. You need to be continually looking at problems, solving problems, thinking things through. It's a very complex world. And all of our programs, all of Massey's programs focus on trying to sharpen and sometimes to be fair for students, it can be quite painful, but we do it in a very gentle way because we do love our students. But you know, challenging your thinking getting you with asking the hard questions so that you're able to really exercise your brain is really just another muscle that you need to learn to use. Co working collaboratively, it's a complex world. So it's, it's not good enough for you to go off in a closet and in a dark room and, and work independently. What now is more productive is teamwork, working collaboratively. You see that most successful organizations, they have pods. So they work within teams where everyone brings to the table a different skill set. They have something that they can contribute. They think differently. You have a team that maybe comprises, you know, men, women, different different uh, cultural backgrounds, and they all bring different elements to a group. That's collaboration. Thinking creatively. Why do you need to think creatively? Well, you need to think creatively because, as I said earlier, you're going to have eight careers. Five of those don't even exist yet. So you always need to be thinking of how things might be. Think about how things might be, not thinking about how things have always been. 
because the way things always have been is going to be thrown in the rubbish bin as you move forward because things are changing that fast. So you need to think create creatively, come up with solutions. I mean, who would have ever thought, for example, of, of something like I, I use Airbnb because back in when I traveled, I used to use Airbnb. I mean, who would have ever thought that I would be renting a, a, a room on, a, on, my, on my, you know, Google Chrome? Uh, and that I would be making all these arrangements and that's one of the, or, or who would have ever thought that you would have Uber, come on. I mean, so that's creativity, confidence. You need to have confidence in who you are and in your thinking skills and on your creativity. You need to be able to have the confidence to make what seems to be hard decisions or decisions that are outside the norm. Uh, of course, communication probably this communication, not probably, communication should be ranked, in fact, number one. Of the seven Cs, communication is, is definitely number one uh, because you have to communicate whether written or, or orally speaking like I'm speaking to you tonight. And that's the difference now with back to the accountancy example where accountants uh, typically, historically, you know, many years ago, they weren't really valued for their communicative skills they were simply valued for their ability to crunch numbers, to, to add up debits and credits. But now you need to speak with your client, understand their circumstances, understand their problems, take that away, come up with a solution, and then you need to come back to them and communicate back what your solution is in a way that they understand and a way that they're able to execute. Uh, you need to be curious about the world always asking the why, the what questions. You know, why is this the way it is? Does it need to be the way it is? Curiosity, what makes this work? You know, because curiosity then leads to these other seven, uh, the other six C's, cognition and creativity and all that. Be curious about the world and the world around you. The last, the last C is uh, debatable, but I think maybe for my generation, but you're a younger generation, you need to have a sense in your career of the community around you because you know it's it's we are more attuned now to a bigger uh, community and, and and something beyond the traditional bottom line of profit and loss for an organization uh, there's a lot of other aspects of giving back to the community working with the community uh, from a finance point of view right now, that's very much a consideration. It's called ESG investing. And, and having that lens ultimately uh, will help you by doing good, you'll do well. I, you know, your businesses will make more money and be more profitable, okay? So those are the seven Cs. And, and I'll just repeat what I've already said. And that is that in actual fact, what we've done at Massey is, is we focus on those seven C's at Massey Business School, we focus every single uh, course that you take will have elements in that that teach you about you know, cognition, that will teach you on what it's like to work with groups to collaborate, will challenge you, uh, will you know, get you to think cre uh, creatively about problem resolution. Um, communication is key and it's something that we assess. We, have you even ever in an accounting paper we're not just going to give you an exam based on your ability to balance the books, but in actual fact, you'll probably receive equal, equal credit for expressing or illustrating your ability to communicate, to, to write up your results or to present to a group of students or your teachers, okay? Okay, so that's the background. So finding the right career in industry. That's, that's, that's a bit challenging and I wish I could say that there was one right answer, but there are many right answers. Because ultimately what's going to lead you to a successful career is going to be finding your passion and marrying up your passion, because that's what's gonna propel you. It's gonna be passion, you know, and marrying up your passion with some underlying skills that will take you further. So there's no point in you, you know, if your parents say you need to be an accountant because your grandfather was an accountant, but you absolutely hate numbers and you absolutely hate accounting, you're going to have a miserable life to begin with.
But additionally, you're not going to, to have a fast track career because it's passion is the fuel that drives the motor. Skill is the technical skills that help you to turn the wheel. But what is gas in your motor is actually the passion. So what you need to do, you look here down here, is you need to find that intersection, the overlay, the overlap between you know, your passions and your skills. Now, you might say, well, I'm very passionate about basket weaving and basket weaving isn't really a good career. Well, I don't know, really? You know, you might, up, up, you know, take a basket weaving and take up like a home-based enterprise, um, you know, business that will, you know, distribute baskets in an online sense to the entire world that are crafted in India or wherever you want to call home, uh, that you could take your skill and marry it up with your business acumen that you will learn through your degree and, you know, find uh, a, a channel for doing that. So, so passion is definitely uh, an important aspect and skills as well, which we teach you. Now, I, I will just go back because what we do at Massey as well is, you know, it's not always clear what your passions are. So what we've done at the business school is we've redesigned our programs to include what's called electives. So there are any number of, out of your entire degree, for example, fully one third of your degree are, it's your choice. You know, you, you will have to take, say, for example, some finance courses, but you might want to learn about the arts. You might want to learn about sciences. You might want to learn about other uh, different areas as a minor that ultimately will help you find your passion. And that's what we are really about at Massey by allowing all of these electives that you can choose outside of your major courses uh, to help you identify your passion because you probably, or you may or may not know what's out there. It's a big world, okay? And there's a lot of different opportunities that you're possibly not aware of either. I mean, which industry do you start in? I mean, of course, the technology sector, everybody hears about that. There are a lot of great jobs and there are a lot of great jobs here in New Zealand in the tech sector. Uh, New Zealand has a very, very robust tech sector. And, and within tech, I mean, it doesn't mean you have to be a programmer either. You can be a business analyst. You can, in some of my contacts, not surprisingly, within the tech sector, are all CFOs or CIOs or investment officers, or you know, they look at the, the money flow. Because any company, uh, regardless of the sector, has the basic core business functions, right? Uh, every business has an accounting function, a finance of any size as a finance function, marketing function, HR function, uh, managers, and so forth. So it doesn't matter what sector. And so align yourself if you're if tech uh, is what really gets you excited, if you're liking gaming or computers or whatever, um, programming, find an area within the growth sector. Um, travel. <laughs> Travel, travel, by the way, it doesn't seem like it now, I'm sure, but, but travel is going to, in another two years probably, is going to come back. If you want to see more of the world, travel is certainly uh, a big area that was going to come back with some, some resurgency. Trust me on that one. Um, all kinds of, of impactful sort of businesses that are environmentally uh, oriented, that are in the biotech, I mean, India, uh, for example, has a huge, huge, phenomenal and, and uh, incredible uh, biotech and pharma industry uh, that, that in some ways leads the world, um, you know, in terms of working in an industry that's reducing carbon emissions. In your generation, that's going to be in the next, you know, as I said, you're going to be working 50 years. Uh, 50 years from now, you won't even recognize where we're at now in terms of you know, the, the, the problems we're creating to the environment and everything else, that's a whole new industry. If you think electric vehicles didn't even exist 10 years ago, can you imagine 50 years from now? So there's a lot of different opportunities and careers. These are the some of them that I mentioned here that you might, once you find your passion, once you've got the skills through a degree, um, you know, these are some of the different areas, medicine, uh, renewable energy, of course, IT, uh, international, I mean, the, the international boundaries are falling down by the day. Um, so global marketplace, uh, digital marketing, data analytics, Massey has a very strong data analytics program, financial analysis, um, my passion. So I did find my passion and it's something that I'm very happy 
that I have followed over the years is, you know, finance. I'm, I'm good with finance. I enjoy numbers. I enjoy meeting interesting people in the financial services industry. To me, it's a perfect fit. Uh, but for yourselves, you know, there's these other, these are the fastest growing uh, sort of sectors that are out there. So, so we're looking at really what are the skills, and we've talked about the seven, seven C's. We've talked about some of you know, the importance of marrying passion uh, with some underlying skill. We teach that at Massey. Uh, but fundamentally, every organization, whatever your industry, they need people. They do need people. It doesn't matter. We started out this discussion you know, with a technological transformation. Uh, and oh my God, we're going to have robots taking over our, all of our jobs. That's not the case at all. And, and it's already shown and illustrated in finance and other areas, for an example, that have been under threat. Businesses, organizations in every industry, they still need people. They need them more than ever. And they need people with business skills and they need people with people skills. And that goes back to the seven C's that I'm speaking to you about, that intercommunication skill the collaborative skills. Um, you know, these are people with people skills. Nobody wants to hire somebody who doesn't work well in a group, for example. Nobody, no organization wants to hire people who are very rigid in their thinking. So it all comes down to organizations want people with business skills and they want people with people skills. And, and I don't think that can be overstated. And I think, you know, when I'm as a, as a lecturer at Massey University, I'd have to say the biggest mistake people, our students make is in coming to university and doing their degree, whatever degree it is, and thinking that all they have to do is come and get a piece of paper, a, grad, a diploma in business or in science or whatever, and think that that's gonna be their golden ticket. So what I'm here to tell you tonight is that's not gonna be your golden ticket. And from the day you start university, you need to be thinking about some of the points that I'm raising with you tonight uh, as, as your key to success. Yes, getting a university degree is very, very important, but what you learn at university, how you, how you develop as a person at university is even more important. The, the degree might maybe might open the door to your first interview. It possibly will get you your first job, but it's not going to propel you on your career and your career journey. And at Massey University, we recognize that. So what we're wanting to do is to arm you, to prepare you uh, with the skills that are required for you to, to make that successful journey. And we are very pleased to be a part of that journey. And I, I don't think that can be overstated or understated. I think it's just a fact uh, that that's something that Massey University is, is well known for. And certainly we value that as part of who we are as an organization. So we do have, uh, you know, as you would imagine, all these are, we have our Bachelor of Business and I'm only gonna talk about this for a couple minutes just to give you an idea and, and, and Linda can help you out maybe with answering some questions on different programs, but I'm here speaking about the business school. We have our number one uh, degree is Bachelor of Business. Number two is Bachelor of Accountancy. You want to be a pilot? You want to be an, a an airport manager? I mean, who ever thought that a career uh, in aviation as an airport manager would be a hot ticket career? Let me tell you, all you got to do is look around the world. Uh, not now, but COVID's going to be a blip. It's going to be over before we know it. And this will go back to everybody traveling by air and managing these huge, air huge airports around the world in India and elsewhere. Um, is, is, a, is a very attractive uh, career option. Bachelor of Communication, Sport Management, um, Bachelor of Aviation Management, these are all degrees. But I'm just highlighting the, the Bachelor of Business, which is the first one. Uh, so in that, within that Bachelor of Business, you could choose the core kind of business areas as, as specializations, uh, accountancy, economics, finance, management, marketing, international business, uh, property, all these different areas, communications we have available to you once you've identified your passion. And that's the other thing I didn't say, is when you start with a Bachelor of Business, your first year of study, you don't have to decide whether you want to be a specialization in accountancy or finance or communication. You don't have to do that till your second year. Because how do you know? You start university, how do you know you're going to be a financier? How do you know you want to be a, a, 
a manager or an accountant. You don't. I didn't. When I was your age, I certainly did. I, I don't know if I still do know what I want to be when I grow up. Uh, but it all takes time. And, and this way you have a choice to make a decision. Okay. Uh, we do have uh, uh, some master's programs. As I understand the audience tonight, I put this in tonight, not knowing if there would be potential master's students. Um, so I'll just skip through this. But similar to the bachelor's program, we have a number of very specialized and professional master's programs in analytics. I spoke about finance, master's of professional accounting and finance, MPAP is one of those uh, very specializations. But uh, a typical pathway might be for uh, you as students in India coming through, uh, maybe even starting your journey in India at one of your local universities, perhaps, uh, and then coming through to Massey and ultimately ending up in one of our uh, master's programs. There's a lot of post-study uh, work rights. Linda might touch on those in terms of visas, uh, et cetera, but we do have a variety of different programs. And these were some of our, where our graduates end up, but this was me in 19, 2019, the CEO of Gardens by the Bay in Singapore. He's a Massey graduate. I, he's the most generous man I've, I think I've met. On a busy night, he gave me a behind the scenes tour of Gardens by the Bay. It's such a beautiful, um, beautiful, beautiful facility. And he probably spent two or three hours with me. He's a Massey graduate. Uh, Anna is a great, she's in Spark is the IT uh, section there. It's, uh, she's head of business performance. She's a Massey graduate who's become a pretty close uh, contact um, friend to a degree uh, is Ross McEwen, who head up, headed up the Royal Bank, bank of Scotland. Uh, now he's at NAB, uh, the biggest bank in this part of the world. Uh, he's a Massey graduate. He actually, the funny story with Ross is he'd be very proud to tell you is that he failed accountancy, not once, not twice, but three times uh, at Massey University <laughs> before, before he decided he better get serious and focus on his career. And ultimately, his career uh, with, as a Massey student graduate uh, alumni has landed him right at the top. Um, these are some of the brands that you may or may not be familiar with here in New Zealand, but they're big brands. Toyota, of course, you would recognize, um, but Deloitte, you might, um, and so forth. But Massey, back to my earlier comment, Massey, uh, I would say, out of all the New Zealand universities, I, I would say definitely Massey is the best connected with practice. That's what we do. We bridge academia with practice. That's what we do. And we connect with our students as well. So that's us. That's Massey University. That's me. I've gone a little bit over time, but not hugely. Um, Massey University. And there you are at that cliff. You take a different perspective. And rather than looking like you're standing on the edge of the cliff ready to fall off, your perspective here is you're looking out and you're on top of the world. You're on top of the world, ready to go out and get cracking on an exciting career with your Massey degree in hand. Um, and I'm sure you'll have a successful, a successful journey. So that's it for me. And I guess we'll open up to some questions now. Uh, but thank you for your time.